Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Last time we set up the graphics engine architecture consisting of a high level renderer and one or more low level renderers. We also started implementing a DirectX 12 renderer and so far we successfully initialized a Direct3D device that represents the graphics card. In this episode we will be writing the code for submitting work to the GPU using commands. We submit work to the GPU through a command queue. A command queue is an interface that accepts command lists and executes the commands on the GPU. A command list is used to record the work that would like to be done on the GPU in the form of commands. Recording commands happens on the CPU. A command allocator provides and manages the memory that's required to store those commands. The simplest form of submitting work is to first record the commands on the CPU and then execute them on the GPU. To ensure that both CPU and GPU take turns recording and executing commands, we need to synchronize work submission. This is done by using signaling fences and events. I'll explain this synchronization later in more detail. Evidently, this method requires the GPU to wait for the CPU when recording commands and, conversely, the CPU must wait for the GPU while it's executing commands. A more efficient scheme is using multiple command allocators to record commands for multiple frames. Each allocator, along with the data needed for each frame, is referred to as a frame buffer. In frame buffer approach, the CPU continuously keeps recording commands, while the GPU executes the commands as fast as possible. Ideally, the workload for the CPU and GPU is balanced, which ensures that both components can continue without stalling. Realistically though, often either CPU or the GPU has to wait for the other to finish work. In case that the recording on the CPU is the bottleneck, there is one more option for improvement. We can use multiple command lists to record commands in parallel using multiple threads. In this case, we need as many command lists as the number of threads, as well as the same number of command allocators per frame buffer. For the implementation of our graphics engine, I will start with three frame buffers using a single thread. In the future, when we have realistic workloads, we can make a decision on whether it's beneficial to implement a multi-threaded version. Let's start by doing a little fix for something that's not working for the tests that we have here. To do some other tests than test renderer, for example, if I go back to test the window functionality and try to build it, then you can see here that we have already defined errors. And that's right, because here in test window header, we have implementation for these functions, but also in test renderer translation unit, we have implementation for engine test. And this test renderer gets included anyway. So regardless of whether we have set the macro definitions here for test window or test renderer, this test renderer translation unit always gets included. And the way to solve this problem is just simply by excluding this code when test renderer definition is not one. So going back here, these macros haven't been defined at this point because we only define them in the main translation unit. So I need to move these to somewhere else where it's included in all headers and CPP files. And since test header is included in all the files, I can add those here. And then I need to include the test header here in main as well. Now we can see that test window is defined to one and the other ones are zero. And now it builds again and I can run the test project and you can see that the window is open. Okay, that was our little fix. Let's start with the actual code that I want to write for today. Put this back to test renderer. Most of the time when we are going to submit work to the GPU, it is for the purposes of rendering the scene. And therefore I'm going to add a new function here in our interface to render the scene. For now, we just simply call this function without any parameters, but in the future, of course, we need to tell the renderer what we want to render in the scene. So this function will have other parameters. And of course, we don't have the render function in our interface, so we need to add it. And 
And in the low level renderer, we need to have the render function as well. Then we can go ahead and implement it here in the core CPP file. Whenever we are going to render something, I would like to have something like begin frame. So we prepare submitting work to the GPU and at the end frame, we wrap things up and finally submit everything to the GPU. To automate this process and have something that manages this, I'm going to write a class and that class is going to use command queues and command lists and allocators, as I explained earlier. So we are going to need a command queue. And also we need a command list. Here's a pointer reference alignment, and it says align left, but I don't want that. And I just wanted to leave it as I type it in. So just select this and press okay. And now if I add spaces here and I reformat the document, then it will stay the same. And that's the way I like it. Next, we need to create a command queue and a command list. So therefore I'm going to write a constructor for this. Now the first parameter that I need to give this constructor is the device because we need a pointer to a device interface to create a command queue. As you can see here, we need to fill in a structure that describes this command queue and then it will give back a pointer to that interface. So let's create and fill in a description structure. If we have multiple GPUs in our system, we can configure this command queue so that it will execute commands on a specific GPU. And we can do that by using node mask, but for now I'll just fill in zero. Now we also need to tell the device to create a command queue for a certain type of command list that we are going to use. There are several types of command list. There is bundle, compute, copy, direct, and a couple more for video processing. And to tell this class to create a certain kind of command queue for us, I'm going to have a second parameter. Now we are ready to call this function with this description. And as always, we use this macro to get a pointer to the interface that we want. And of course, we need to also check whether this creation function succeeded or not. And again, we use the edge result for that. And if it would fail, we just jump to the end of the function and call release. For now, I'll just leave it empty. Let's continue implementing the constructor here. After we created this command queue, I'd like to give it a name, like we did here for the other interfaces that we created. I'm going to use this macro to give the newly created command queue a name. And I would like to choose a name that depends on the type of the queue that we just created. If we created a queue for executing GPU commands or graphics commands, I'll call it graphics command queue. If we created the queue exclusively to do compute work, then it's obviously a compute command queue and just a command queue in all other cases. Now that we are done creating the command queue, I'm going to create a command list.
Again, we'll check if the value of h result is okay. And if not, we again jump to the end of the function. Now, when we create a command list, we need to close it so that we can reset it to start recording commands. And again, give it a name. And of course you notice that I put a question mark here because this function expects a pointer to a command allocator interface. As I explained before, we need one command allocator per frame buffer. Now I'm going to create a new private class in here that will contain a pointer to a command allocator interface as well as functionalities which we'll be using later for CPU-GPU synchronization. Then we can create as many instances of this private class as the number of frame buffers that we are going to use. Now here we can define how many of these command frames we would like to have. This frame buffer count is a constant that won't ever change and therefore I'm going to put it in common headers for our low level renderer. So for our DirectX 12 low-level renderer, we will have three frames, and we are going to use this to create that many command allocators. Now that we have three instances of this command frame, we need to create the allocators as well. So we already can fill in this question mark using a pointer to the first command allocator in this array. And if any of these creation functions fail, we jump to the end of the function and release everything. Like we did here, to give the list and a queue a name, I would like to give these command allocators a name as well. But we have got three of them in this case, and I would like to add to the end of each command allocator the index of that allocator. So for example, if we had multiple lists, I would like to add something like the index at the end. So for the first one, we would have zero. For the second one, we would have one, two, and so on. Obviously, this macro won't do that for us, so I need to write a new one that also adds an index at the end of the name. Here, after this macro definition, I'll add a new macro. Here I reserve some space for the name to be generated using the string that we provide as a name and the integer that we convert to the string. And I'm using this swsprintf to generate a name using Unicode characters and set that name for this object and also output a message in the output panel that this object was created. Now that we created the command queue, command list, and the allocators, we are ready to implement these functions to start the frame and end the frame. Here I can add two more functions that we can call for that.
To begin the frame, we first need to wait until the GPU has been done working on it previously. And therefore, I am going to add a new function here in command frame that will wait for the GPU to be finished working on this frame. First, we need to figure out which frame we are working on. So we need a frame index that will tell us which frame we are working on, and therefore I'm going to add it here. And each time we end a frame, we need to increment this frame index, but then wrap it around when it reaches the frame buffer count. Here I add one to the frame index, and when it reaches the value of frame buffer count, it will wrap around and go back to zero. When we return from this wait function, we know that the GPU has finished working on this frame that we are going to render. And in order to record new commands, we need to reset the command allocator as well as the command list. When we are creating a command list or resetting a command list, we can also give it a default pipeline state object, which is optional. I'll explain the pipeline state object when I explain the high level overview of the DirectX 12 pipeline. But for now, we just give it a null pointer, which means that there isn't a default pipeline state. And this is all we need to do to start the frame, after which we can record commands. And when we are done recording commands, we need to end the frame, which submits the commands to the GPU and executes them. Before we execute commands on the GPU, we need to close the command list, and then we can create an array of the command lists that we have and execute those on the GPU using execute command list. In our case, we just have one command list because we are going to record our commands on a single thread for now. Now we are basically done with the work submission part, but of course we need to write this function and work on CPU and GPU synchronization part. In the next video, I'll explain how this synchronization works and of course write the code to do so. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.